Hello everyone, my name is Lilian Chaban. I'm a PhD student in Brno University of Technology in Czech Republic. I'm actually in second year and I'm studying pumps. So for my thesis, I do not use OpenFoam, but OpenFoam is more some kind of hobby. And it turns out with some colleagues, we try to make some pump simulation in OpenFoam and it was not so easy. And so after succeeding, Oh, well, I think it's nice to make a presentation as it could be useful for some people, I hope. So here we're going to present the frozen rotor approach and we're going to make some comparison between one commercial simulation and open foam CFD computation for the same case. So the presentation will be in six parts. First, we're going to present the pump physics, then the CFD of pumps, um, the setup I used and the four cases the mesh, the result, and finally conclude about the small study. So, purpose of pumps is to raise the pressure of liquids. Uh, how do we measure this pressure? We use the so-called head. So here we're going to measure the total pressure at the outlet minus the total pressure at the inlet. The torque that we're going to measure on the walls of the impeller, so the rotor and the efficiency, or here the hydraulic efficiency, which is going to be the ratio of the water power divided by the shaft power. And for those three variables, we're going to measure them at five flow rates. And so in the end, we're going to be able to plot curves, as you can see here. About the CFD of pumps, the first way is the brutal way, where you're going to go for the unsteady simulation and solve the flow for every position of the impeller. Here you can see a nice example with this beautiful video of CFD support. But we're going to use steady state computation. So there is a frozen rotor and the mixing plane. So the disadvantage of the frozen rotor, so what we're going to do here, is that it's basically a snapshot of the unsteady simulation. But as you can see an example here, the head or even torque and efficiency and all variables inside a pump, they can vary a lot. They are very unsteady and this is mainly due to the big interaction between the rotor and the stator. So basically the tongue of the volute or the cut water of the volute is going to introduce all these peaks that you see here when the blade is passing close to it. And this is why the frozen rotor approach is not the best. If you want it to have an average value of the head, it's better to compute many positions of the frozen rotor and take average of all these values. And the mixing plane approach is going to get rid of all interaction and make a circumferential averaging at the interface. And you're more likely to have a closer value to unsteady simulation using mixing plane. So to talk about the different parts of the pump. You will have first the suction, which is where the water is coming from. Water is then going into the impeller channels. Uh, and then the water is collected in the spiral casing and goes out to the outlet. And here you can see two sidewall gaps on the shroud and the hub side. But we're going to neglect them. So what's happening physically is that here you will have a high pressure region here a low pressure region and you will have recirculation appearing. But in preliminary design or when you want to compare a lot of design, it's common to completely neglect these sidewall gaps. So here we're just going to put walls here for simplifications. About the test case, you can see a picture down here. So you have in that pipe in green, in pattern, red, the volute in blue, and finally simple outlet pipe here. Uh, the values we're going to measure are going to be between the inlet and the connection here at the end of the volute. This pump is totally fake. It's just made up for here. So there is no experimental data to compare. It's really just purely CFD comparison. So the boundary condition at the inlet is going to be flow rate, which is going to vary for to have our five points. 10, 20, 30, 40, and 45 liters per second. Outlet, simply steady pressure. 
turbulence model when it's sky omega SST because why not? Numerics just something really robust because the goal was to have something which is not diverging or anything but to have some results and quickly and the solver is going to be simple foam for 2000 iteration and I didn't have a really nice converging result so uh, I averaged all variables over the last 500 iterations now about the cases the first case is going to be a mesh and a solver um, so everything is going to be commercial the mesh and the solver Second case is going to be open foam, where the mesh is going to be the same as the previous one, and the connection between the different parts is going to be ensured by cyclic AMI. So here you're going to say, yeah, AMI means arbitrary moving interface. So why do you use moving interface for steady state case? And just because it works pretty well. Uh, third case is going to be the mesh made with CF mesh here. This is the only difference. And the third case, we're going to mesh with CF mesh, but we're going to mesh the inlet, impeller, and volute block at once, and just use the cell zone set to define the impeller region. Okay, so here are just some advices to make life easier, as it was source of problem for us. Uh, first, at the interfaces, you're going to have a measure of how good your AMI is. So what's important is... Here is the, the minimum number. So if you have a zero here, it means one of your cell is actually not facing any other one at the interface, and your computation is going to crash instantly. Uh, it was appearing mainly at the connection between the inlet and the impeller. So to avoid it, try to ensure that your STLs are exactly the same at the interface, and then use the, me the same mesh cell size and boundary layer size and it should be fine and in MRF properties you need to add your two AME patches of your rotating region inside if you not if you do not do this you will have a mass flow like the mass flow is not going to be conserved and finally since you measure the head and stuff like this some variable swap for foam comes handy here Three meshes are tested here, so the first two cases have the same mesh. As you can see, there is the inlet pipe, the impeller, and the outlet pipe. They are all purely hexahedral, and the volute is filled with tetrahedras and prisms. For the second case, every components are meshed independently in CF mesh. Uh, as you can see, I reached a very, very high number of cells, and it's because CF mesh does like produces bad cells uh, near the blade and especially the leading edge. So I try to refine this region, but I refined it way too much. It was not useful, definitely, but I kept it because I have time. I had time. And finally, the third mesh where the inlet, impeller, and volute were meshed at once. Um, I decided not to put boundary layer just to see the impact or the effect of having no boundary layer on the on the head torque and efficiency curve. And finally, the results. So here you have the head, which is nicely dropping the flow rate, the efficiency, which increases and then decreases. So the best efficiency point is probably between these two points here. So for the first comparison, the first case of open foam, so same mesh, just different solver. You can see that the head is basically the same everywhere. There is a small difference at this point. The efficiency overall is a bit shifted downwards by a few percent. For the second case, where the mesh is done with CF mesh, so um, we have the head which is now completely fitting with the commercial results and efficiency follows the first open form case which is good because it shows consistency and independence of the mesh and for the third case the head is over predicted at higher flow rate as we can see here and the efficiency is a bit different because it's the lowest at low flow rate and it's the highest at high flow rates so we definitely see that the boundary layer have some kind of effects here
for the torque plot, well, we find what we had in the previous curve. Meaning at high flow rate, we have the same head but smaller efficiency for open foam. So we have a higher torque, as we can see here. Uh, however, for the last case where there is no boundary layer, we see, we see that the torque is over predicted everywhere and especially at high flow rate. So definitely use boundary layer. Now if we take a look at the velocity field, uh, you can see that for all cases it's basically the same. So there is slight different of color because for the commercial case I couldn't export the data to fit them in Paraview. So the scale is a tiny bit different, but you see that the main features, even the small features, are here. However, for the last case, you can see this weird thing happening at the interface. And this is probably a bad setup from me, I guess, because I heard from other people that they were using this setup successfully. And we find this also for the pressure field. So once again, the pressure field looks the same for all cases. However, here you also have this big discontinuity. So that's a problem. But I'm not sure I want to dig into it simply because the cyclic AMI works perfectly here. So that's nice. Okay, so in the end, the cyclic AMI give quite good results if you compare them to the commercial software for the frozen rotor approach, of course. And even the use of CF mesh really surprised me in a good way, because even though I had quite some bad cells close to the blade, as I mentioned, well, the simulation ran totally fine, and the results were also completely okay. So, no problem about this. The cell zone set approach showed bad result at the interface, maybe and most probably because of a bad setup, but it's okay because. The first approach of the cyclic AMI has a big advantage. It's that you can mesh all your parts separately, and so you can use the same mesh for a transient simulation later on. So for the next steps, uh, the first step will be to use the mixing plane approach, which is already something implemented in foam extent. However, uh, there is some tutorial, but when I try to put it in practice, it's completely different. So there is proof that it works, as there is some paper from Mr. Yasak and Mr. Baudouin, but those people are big people of open foam. So if one of you guys um, is doing it or know how to do it and you would like to share it, then feel free to contact me and we can discuss about it. Thank you very much for listening and bye-bye.